The United States and Britain have imposed new sanctions on Iran and its weapons manufacturers to punish Tehran for its missile and drone attacks on Israel last weekend. At a meeting of G7 foreign ministers in Italy, Lord Cameron said he hoped the international response would persuade Israeli officials not to retaliate too strongly and see off a wider war. White House officials said the sanctions were aimed at disrupting Iran's ability to produce the unmanned aerial vehicles that its military used to attack Israel by cutting off global financial transactions with those companies involved in building them. At the UN, Iran's Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdelkhian had this to say. In case of any use of force by the Israeli regime and violating our sovereignty, the Islamic Republic of Iran will not hesitate to assert its inherent rights, to give a decisive and proper response to it, to make the regime regret its actions. But in New York, the UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez was decidedly downbeat about the situation in the Middle East, warning that the region is on a precipice. In a speech to the UN Security Council, Mr Gutierrez urged all countries to exercise maximum restraint, saying one miscalculation could lead to full-scale regional conflict. It is high time to end the bloody cycle of retaliation. It is high time to stop. The international community must work together to prevent any actions that could push the entire Middle East over the edge with a devastating impact on civilians. Let me be clear, the risks are spiraling on many fronts. In Italy, Ukraine was also on the agenda. Here's the UK Foreign Secretary, Lord David Cameron, on the support that Kiev needs. Ukraine couldn't be clearer. They need more ammunition. We are helping to fill that gap. Uh, they need more air defences. That gap needs to be filled. No country has done more than Britain in terms of helping the Ukrainian armed forces, helping the Ukrainian people and the Ukrainian government. And we look forward to hearing what Foreign Minister Kaleva has to say today about the further steps that we need to take. Well, let's get reaction then in Italy for us tonight at the G7, Jessica Parker, and also our diplomatic correspondent who's in Jerusalem, James Landau. James, if I could just start with you, does the Israeli War Cabinet share the view of the Secretary General that things are as precarious as he believes they are? Oh, I think they are aware of the consequences um, of any further miscalculation uh, if Israel's response to Iran's attack at the weekend does trigger an escalatory process. Uh, yeah, no, I think they are incredibly aware of that. But at the same time, they are determined to respond. And I think what they would want to do is respond and then leave it at that. You hear that from spokespeople saying, you know, we need to act, we need to do something. They're aware of the consequences. Whether they are as aware, as concerned as some of their allies uh, have been uh, signalling in recent days, I think remains to be seen. We simply don't know yet precisely what the Israelis are going to do. They, they say they are going to act. We don't know how yet. We don't know when. Uh, there is some speculation, it's no more than that, that it's possible they might delay any action until after the Passover holiday. But again, that could be just people here in Jerusalem um, wishing uh, for the best, a little bit of what's called optimism bias. Yeah. Jess, the, the sanctions announced today were heavily trailed um, ahead of the meeting. Uh, will they mollify the Israelis? Uh, is there any faith in a sanctions regime like this? Because they're obviously not the first sanctions imposed on Iran. No, I mean, I think uh, the UK figures are 13 entities and individuals being sanctioned, uh, as you said, linked to Iran's missile and drone programme to add to the already existing 400 sanctions that are in place. But look, I think certainly the hope is from the likes of Lord Cameron, um, the British Foreign Secretary, that this will be something they can sell again to the Israelis, this idea of a win, uh, an act of solidarity, sending a message uh, to Iran. But it's interesting, um, Lord Cameron, alongside the German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock, arrived here to Capri pretty late yesterday because they'd come, both of them, from Israel, where they'd been meeting with Israeli leaders as they were 
obviously calling on Israel to show restraint um, in response to the Iranian attack. That message has continued here, although it has to be said discussions have now moved on uh, to the war in Ukraine. But I think it was interesting to note that after those conversations that Annalena Baerbock and David Cameron had in Israel, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu was very clear that Israel would be making its own choices. The other discussion in Capri, Jess, was Ukraine. Uh, they're returning to this idea of mm. using the frozen Russian assets or well, the, the interest accrued from those assets to fund the war effort. How far have they got with that? Because I know it is part of one of the bills that they'll discuss in the US House of Representatives this weekend. Yeah, it seems to be a pretty complicated idea and one, as you say, that's been kicking around for a really long time and there's been hesitancy before because of uh, legal complexities. As talking to officials here tonight, they say, they tell me the US is pushing this idea, as you say, using uh, frozen Russian assets, uh, the bulk of which are uh, held in Europe. Um, to use the interest to then get a loan in order to channel money to Ukraine. In terms of whether this is going to happen, obviously we don't know. The indications I've had is that we certainly won't get over the line at this G7 foreign ministers um, meeting. If anything, if they can get there, it would be something they tried to finalise at the leaders' G7 summit uh, later in the summer. James, one of the, the more alarming uh, pieces of rhetoric we heard today from the Iranian side was that they're reviewing their nuclear strategy. Um, they seem to be implying rather overtly that it, they might try and seek a nuclear weapon if, if Israel were to attack them. I mean, you, when you look at, at how that might play out, if you stretch forward and look at the implications of that, we could soon be into a, a new arms race. Yeah, look, the Iranians are in full deterrence mode at the moment, doing everything they possibly can to minimise uh, whatever Israeli response is coming. And one of the, we've just heard it from that clip from um, uh, Mr. Amir Abdullahian, the, the Iranian foreign minister speaking at the UN. You've also had this um, IRGC Revolutionary Guard general talking about this nuclear thing. Now, at the moment, uh, Iran says that its nuclear programme is purely civilian. There are many countries in the West that do not believe them and have been trying to restrict that program for many, many years because they fear that actually Iran is trying to develop weapons grade uh, nu nuclear fuel that could be used uh, to make a nuclear weapon. So for Iran to say to become overt about its nuclear ambition, you know, would be a substantial step change. It's part of the attempt to try and persuade the Israelis to minimize their escalation. It could have the opposite effect. It mm. could encourage the Israelis to target those nuclear facilities uh, that they have done before and, and could well do again. So, again, every, the Iranians trying to minimize Israel's response, but Israel's still being pulled. They want to respond. Pressure from the Iranians, pressure from their allies. Uh, you know, they're in quite a bind at the moment. Yeah. They haven't finally made up their decisions yet. Just briefly, James, just a quick word on the Qataris who've been talking today, saying they, they're going to consider whether to continue in the role as mediators. Why are they concerned about what's been going on? Look, there are some American politicians who've been critical of the Qataris, saying they're not putting enough pressure on Hamas to agree a deal, that they're, you know, they're hosting the Hamas leadership in Qatar alongside a big American base. What's happened is the Qataris are pushing back, saying, look, enough of that. You know, if you guys push us any further, we could, you know, draw stumps and leave this negotiation. Nobody really wants that. So I think this is an act of the Qataris pushing back against those American critics. James Landale, Jess Parker, lovely to see you both. Thank you for your contributions tonight.